Hello and welcome back, this is part 5 of Blender Basics and this time we're talking about lighting. So first of all I'm going to set up my scene so that we can see the effects of the lights. To do this I'm going to go up to the corner here, left click and drag, so I've got two viewports. Now we don't need the tool panel here or the panel over here, you can get rid of the tool panel with T and N for this panel. And actually I don't need it for this side either so I'm going to press N on this side. Whichever one your mouse is over, that's the one it's going to affect. And what I want to see is a rendered view here. So if I press Shift Z, which is the same as coming down to here and pressing Rendered, I can see the effects of my lights in the scene. At the moment we've set up two emission lights here and we've got a point light over here as you can see just here. We can add lights over here under our Create panel and we've got lamps here and if you click on a lamp so I'm clicking on my point light here, right click, I can go to the lighting settings over here. Remember all of this is in cycles render and if it does say use nodes you need to click on that. But this is probably what most people will see. You can change your lamp with these settings here so I can change it to sun or spot. I'm not going to go through hemi or area, I think for beginners it's best to use these three. So the spotlight you can see has a cone coming out from the light source and I can show the cone just here. It's a little bit easier to see in solid mode so we'll go there and you can see the cone and you can see its effects over here. I can change the size of my cone like this and I can change the blend which is the softness of the edges. And I think these would be very useful to put in front of our emissions just here to look like car headlights. So I'll move that across and down. If I go to top view I'll find this a bit easier. Press G to grab and move it in front. I can rotate around the Z so R then Z and move it into place. Shift D to duplicate and move it across. And I'll just rotate that round the Z, R then Z, and quickly go to front view, grab both of those and pull them down. There we go. They're a bit bright so I'll pull those down with the strength just here. And lastly let's give them a slightly yellowy colour like car headlights. There we go. So that one changed and I'll just make sure that this one is changed as well. There we go, they're both yellow. Now you might ask why I didn't use the emission shader that's on these cubes as the light source. So if I remind us what we've done there, if I click on one of these cubes and duplicate it quickly and bring it up, you can see it's emitting light. When you use objects as lights, they can cause a lot more graininess and they take longer to render. But they do a slightly better job of simulating lighting from objects. But where possible, you're better off using the lamps because they're quicker render times and they create less noise. So let's delete this cube and now I'm going to create a new lamp which is a sun lamp. So let's go over here and click on sun. Now the sun lamp is different to the spotlight as it floods everywhere with light and the same amount of light. So over here has the same amount of light on it as over here. So think of it as a huge big plane over our scene that's emitting an equal amount of light everywhere. So if I move this around it makes no difference to our shadows because it's acting like a big plane. Only when I rotate it will it make a difference and that's the direction that this sunlight is coming from. The strength of the light is here and you control that in the same way as the other one. I'm going to put that down to 1 again and the size of the light affects the shadow sharpness. So if I press 0 on this it makes our shadows very crisp and if I press 5 it's as if the sun's shining through lots of clouds and it's very diffuse. I'm going to pretend that this is a nighttime scene and bring it down to 0.1 and I'm going to make it a bluey colour and it looks a little bit more like we're at night. The last light to look at is the point light. So if I go over here and add a point light in, you can see that this is different to the sun lamp as it does make a difference to where it is in the scene. So if I grab this and pull this over here, you can see it's affecting this area here. Or if I pull it over here, it affects this area here. The strength and the colour are the same as well as the size to the sun lamp, as you can see there. I'm going to delete that because I don't think I need it. I'm going to click on my sun, just go to top view and rotate it into a position I think is favourable. Also go to side view to see the angle you're pointing at. OK, so I want the sun coming from this direction, but if you look up anything about film lighting, you'll know that there's a system called three-point lighting and you can use sun lamps for this. So if I just bring this over here, for three-point lighting you generally have one strong light, a fill light and a backlight, hence three-point lighting. So I'll duplicate this bring it over to here and rotate it round. And as this is the fill light, I'm going to make the size of the light much bigger and therefore softer shadows. 
so then it just fills in the front of the car. It's also sometimes quite nice to change the colour slightly as it gives it some atmosphere. And lastly let's have the backlight. So I'll move that round to here and rotate it so it points at the car. See our main shadows are still coming from our main light source over here. I'll bring this one down a little bit to 0.5 and I'll bring this one down a little bit to 0.7. And now we've got a nice three point lighting setup. The last thing to know about with lighting is your world lights and that's the background. You can see it's very grey at the moment. If I go to my world panel here I can change the colour of this background. Remember to click use nodes and I can change the colour of my background just here and it will affect my scene in terms of light. So remember I want this to look like night time so I'll bring it down to grey and I'll put it a little bit blue and there we've got some quite nice background colour. You can also change the strength of this and that makes it brighter and darker and you can actually put textures in the background because those textures can light your objects and appear in reflections but that's for another time. So remember this is only a preview at 32 samples so we'll go and we'll render it fully. I'll put the samples up slightly and render out. So you can see it's still a bit grainy where I've got my emitters so in this case I might want to turn the samples up. You can see why it's far better to use lamps than objects with emission shaders. So now I've turned the samples up to 500 and here's our render. Remember to save your images down here under save as image. If you don't want it to look like nighttime, you can then change the background. You can even put a sky texture in under color you can go to sky texture and of course I need to come across here press escape to get out of rendered mode and change the color of my lamps. So back on the lamp tab and change that to a nice daytime look with these as well. Put the sun up in strength and turn the lights off at the front as it were. So I'll click these two, press delete to get rid of them and my emissions and my headlamps. I can change the texture of the headlamp so it's not an emission anymore, it's just a diffuse. And maybe change the color of that too. And let's render this one out. And there we have it, a simple car in the daytime with basic three-point lighting. In the next episode, we'll look at animations and rendering out animations.